In this next video, we're going to introduce the topic of congestion and how TCP recognizes when the network is congested and the various things that it can do about that. So the first thing we have to be aware of is remember, TCP is not a data link layer protocol, so it has no idea what's going on in the wire. Uh, and there's the IP protocol in between it and everything else. So from TCP's perspective, it doesn't really know if there's congestion in the network. It has no idea what routers are doing. It has no idea if packets are being dropped, what's going on. So TCP is very limited in its visibility as to what is happening with its segments. Now TCP believes that two nodes are directly connected. Remember, we're talking about the transmission control protocol. It says, look, IP is responsible for determining if two devices are in different subnets, different VLANs or not, based on the virtue of the IP address. But the IP address is a, net, is a layer three, it's a network layer construct, not a transport layer construct. So if congestion exists in the network, because TCP has no inherent way of knowing this, really the only indicator that TCP has that there's a problem is based on acknowledgements. If acknowledgements are being delayed or dropped, that's really the only thing TCP is looking for to determine if there's congestion or not. Now, why does TCP care about congestion? Well, remember, TCP's idea is that I have, as a TCP transmission control block for a particular connection, one of the things I have to be concerned with is how fast I'm transmitting. You know, when I get the go-ahead from the processor to take all the bytes I've created into segments, I've got these segments now ready and waiting to go, question in my mind is when I get that signal to go, how many of these can I put on the wire? Can I put all of them on the wire, just a couple of them on the wire? Uh, should I be starting slow and increasing? And so TCP has algorithms to help answer that question, and it's got more than one algorithm to help answer that question. And based on the presence or lack of congestion in a network, determines that rate, whether it's going to go ramp up really, really quickly or really, really slowly. So being aware of congestion is a very critical thing that TCP has to be aware of. So. RFC 5681, which will blow your mind if you try to read it, but it defines the four congestion control algorithms or mechanisms. Slow start, congestion avoidance, fast retransmit, and fast recovery. And we're going to go over all of these. So I'm going to have, so the next video after this one is going to deal just with slow start. And then the final video after that will deal with the last three. So there's some important uh, terms we have to know with regards to this. Data in flight, also sometimes you'll refer to the, see this referred to as bytes in flight, which is simply bytes or data that's been transmitted but unacknowledged. So TCP has a maximum quantity of bytes that can be in flight. And that is controlled by two different variables. So it's the lesser of one of two things. So remember, we've talked all about how there's a, a couple of windows, there's actually more than one window, but the two main windows we're concerned about is if, I, if the sender is right here, he needs to know for the receiver, what's the receiver's window size? What's the maximum quantity of bytes I can send to this receiver? And then I have to stop. If I send that many bytes to the receiver and I haven't gotten an acknowledgement yet, I have to cease and desist until he sends me an acknowledgement. So that's one thing that can control the maximum amount of bytes in flight. If the receiver says, look, my receive window is 20,000 bytes. Well, then at the most, that's the most amount of bytes in flight you can ever have. I can never transmit more than 20,000 bytes and have 20,000 bytes outstanding. That's where I have to stop. If I send 25,000 bytes and they're unacknowledged, well, that's bad because this guy told me he can't handle 25,000. All he can handle is 20,000. But the receive window from the receiver isn't necessarily the only thing that governs the maximum quantity of bytes in flight. During times of congestion, where acknowledgements have been lost or duplicate acknowledgements have been received, the sender himself might say, well, okay, great. The receiver's told me he can potentially have up to 20,000 bytes outstanding from me. But 
I've detected some packet loss. I've detected some congestion. So in my send window, which governs bytes in flight, remember the send window is the maximum amount of stuff you can have outstanding at any one time. So he might say, well, because there's some delay here, there's some missed acknowledgments, I'm not going to transmit as much as he wants. I might only have, I might only allow myself to have 10,000 bytes in flight or 5,000 bytes in flight until the congestion clears itself up and then I can start ramping up again until eventually I reach the maximum that he's allowing me to do. So bytes in flight is controlled by the send window. And we've seen that send a window can grow and shrink based on either what the receiver is telling you or what your send mechanism is telling you based on congestion and things like that. Senders receive window. Okay, <laughs> this is kind of a weird one. Senders receive window. Uh, so this is basically when you and I are doing a, t a TCP three-way handshake, I don't know who initiates it. Let's say I'm the active initiator and I send you my sync. Okay, so from my perspective, I'm the sender. And when I send you my sync, inside that sync, I include the window size, which is my receive window. So I'm the sender and I'm telling you, hey, I'm going to be sending you stuff, but if you ever reply back to me or send something back to me, this is my receive window. I can only handle so much stuff. So that's the sender's receive window. The initial congestion window, ICWND, and this is called by a lot of things. This is all ca also called just the initial window, the IW, we'll see that. A lot of times it's just called the congestion window. It's also called the send window. So it goes by three different names, the send window, the initial window, the congestion window. But basically, this is the main window that the sender is paying attention to to determine what's the maximum quantity of bytes I can have in flight. So for example, maybe my send window says, okay, right now I'm at 10,000. And I say, well, okay, that's the maximum amount of bytes I have in flight. However, I just transmitted 4,000 bytes. 4,000 bytes are already gone. Haven't got acknowledged yet, but they're out there. So if my send window says I've got a maximum of 10 I can go up to, that means I've got 4,000 bytes out there, which go into that weird category of sent but not yet acknowledged. But my send window has some space in the usable window space. I've still got another 6,000 bytes that I could send if I want to before I reach the maximum quantity of bytes that can be out there in the air but not acknowledged yet. So we talked about that in the sliding window concept where that send window could be composed, maybe it's all used up, everything is already out there, I can't transmit anymore. The maximum quantity I could have outstanding is already out there, outstanding, in which case I have no usable window. There's nothing else I can send right now until I get some acknowledgments back. Or the opposite could be true. Maybe I've got nothing sent right now, there's nothing that's unacknowledged, so my send window could be my usable window. Every single byte in my send window I could send right now because there's nothing that's acknowledged. Or could, there could be a little bit of both in there. We saw that during the sliding window concept. So the, I'm going to use those terms interchangeably, send window and congestion window. Just keep in your mind that they basically mean the same thing in this context. So based on that, we're going to use those terms a lot. So now in the next video, we're going to start by talking about the TCP slow start algorithm, which is one of two algorithms basically used by TCP to govern how much data can I send right now and am I allowed to send more than that the next time around? So we'll look at that in the next video.